welcome to Dining with Death. This episode is on my playlist, Dining with the Departed, where we talk about famous or infamous people who have passed. We discuss their lives, their careers, what they're famous or infamous for, and then I show you and taste either their favorite food or their last meal. I'm Stacy Lee, let's begin. Whitney Houston was born on August 9, 1963 in Newark, New Jersey. She was the youngest of three children born to John Russell Houston Jr. and Emily Sissy Drinkard. Whitney's parents were both musicians and her mother was a famous gospel singer. Whitney grew up in a close-knit family and was surrounded by music from a young age. Her mother encouraged her to sing and by the time she was a teenager, Whitney was already performing in local talent shows. Whitney attended a Catholic school in Newark and developed a love for music early on. She played the piano, sang in church choir, and took dance lessons. She did face some challenges in her childhood. Her parents divorced when she was still young, and she and her siblings had to move around frequently. Her mother struggled with alcoholism and would sometimes take Whitney and her siblings to nightclubs where she would perform. Despite these challenges, Whitney remained focused on her music. In the late 1970s, she started modeling, and she appeared in several magazines, including Seventeen and Glamour. She also started making music with some of her family members, including her mother and her cousin, Dionne Warwick. It's always interesting to me to find out how many people that get really famous come from really famous people. And it's not that they're not talented, it's just that it's so difficult to get noticed in the industry. Coming from a famous family, you have, I don't know, 10, 20, 100 times greater chance of getting heard or getting seen than a regular person. I think on TikTok now they call them Nepo babies. They have a word or a label for everything on TikTok. And I think now if you come from a famous family, that's nepotism, and so they call you a Nepo baby. Whitney Houston's career began in the early 1980s when she signed a record deal with Arista Records, which was run by music industry legend Clive Davis. In 1985, she released her self-titled debut album, which includes the hits Saving All My Love For You and How Will I Know. Whitney's powerful vocals and pop sensibility helped make her a superstar and earned her widespread critical acclaim. In my episode about Michael Jackson, I talk about how I had this friend when I was growing up in Cedar City and she had older brothers and sisters and they were all cool and I'm the oldest in my family so I didn't have anybody to teach me what was cool or what was happening at the moment. And she was the first person that showed me a Michael Jackson album. Well, I think she was also the first person I listened to Whitney Houston with because her sister had an album of Whitney Houston and I just remember seeing, you remember that photo of her, her hair's up and she's in a white tank top and nothing else and that smile. She just has this gorgeous, great big white teeth, glowing skin, beautiful eyes. She was just really, really stunning. A couple of years after Whitney Houston came out, I got pregnant in high school. And when I was picking names, I can't say that I was thinking about Whitney Houston, but my parents had some friends, their last name was Whitney, and I just always liked it. So I think maybe when Whitney Houston came out, I realized it could be a first name too. And I did, in fact, name my first daughter Whitney. I don't ever think of her as connected to Whitney Houston in any way, but I think I probably learned that I could use that for a first name when she came out. I'd never heard it used for a first name. Over the next several years, Whitney continued to release hit albums and singles and became an international megastar. Some of her biggest hits during this time included I Will Always Love You, which we all know by now was written by Dolly Parton, right? We're always and forever going to give the queen the credit for that song, right? The Greatest Love of All and I Wanna Dance With Somebody. Whitney was also cast in a number of film roles. As Whitney was singing, she also decided she was going to start acting. Despite her success, Whitney's career was not without its challenges. She faced criticism in the media for her tumultuous marriage to singer Bobby Brown, and she struggled with drug addiction. Even in the face of these struggles, Whitney continued to be loved by her fans. Her fame and her status were never really affected by her personal struggles. She was a superstar with a very loyal fan base. 
She had a remarkable career as a singer, actress, and model. She is widely regarded as one of the most talented and successful vocalists of all time, and her impact on music and pop culture is still felt today. Whitney's first film was The Bodyguard, where she starred in the lead alongside Kevin Costner. The film was a smash hit and made like half a billion dollars at the box office. I've never seen it. I've talked about this before. I'm not a romance movie person and I'm not really a blockbuster type movie person. I've never seen Titanic either. I know, I know, everyone gets mad when I say that. <laughs> but if that gets you mad, <laughs> I've never seen The Notebook. <laughs> Every time I tell people that I haven't seen The Notebook, they're like, you would really, really, really like The Notebook. And I trust you, I believe I will, and I will watch it one day, I promise I will. <laughs> but I have never seen The Bodyguard, but it was a huge movie. It was, people had posters on their bedroom walls and Whitney Houston was this goddess and Kevin Costner was young and sexy and it was a really big movie. Whitney also starred in Waiting to Exhale, The Preacher's Wife, The Princess Diaries, and others. She made TV appearances on shows like Gimme a Break and Silver Spoons, and she hosted Saturday Night Live. At one point, she even went on The X Factor. Throughout the decades, Whitney released several more multi-platinum albums, and she garnered numerous awards, including multiple Grammys. Whitney Houston has six Grammys, two Emmys, 16 Billboard Music Awards, and 22 American Music Awards. She is known in the industry as The Voice, for good reason. No one, and I mean no one, will ever have a voice like Whitney Houston had. I mentioned earlier her relationship with Bobby Brown. Bobby is from the boy band New Edition, which was really popular for a few years, but they never achieved the success Whitney did. Bobby and Whitney married in 1992, and in 1993, their only child was born, a daughter, Bobby Christina, who sadly has also passed away. Bobby and Whitney had a very, very controversial relationship. I distinctly remember the interview, the interview, where Whitney Houston appeared for questioning, something she rarely did. It was 2002 and she sat down with Diane Sawyer. There were lots and lots of rumors about Whitney's drug use at this time. I can't show you the interview, just photos from it, but it was interesting. It's the interview where Whitney vehemently denies taking drugs, even though she's so, so skinny. And then she says the famous line, crack is whack. She talks about how crack is cheap and she makes way too much money to ever do crack and then caps that off by saying crack is whack. It was all over the papers for days after that. But it was Whitney's relationship with Bobby Brown that caused all the speculation about her appearance and her behavior. She got very, very thin, like I said, and her speaking voice changed. She always sounded a bit hoarse. And then she started missing performances and people wondered if she was losing her talent. I remember one year hearing that she had missed sound check for a big show. It might even have been the Grammys, which, you know, musicians like me, you know, you do not miss sound check for even a little show, let alone something like the Grammys. You have to show up for sound check. The biggest superstars still have to show up for sound check. And I distinctly remember seeing on like, E! News or maybe Entertainment Tonight or something that Whitney Houston had missed sound check for this really big show. And that's just something that, that you don't do. That was kind of the signal of the beginning of the end, I think, for her. And I do believe she ended up performing and then people talked about how it wasn't her greatest performance, you know? Then she obviously kind of blamed the fact that she wasn't at sound check. It, it, it started to get really messy about that point. On the rare occasion that Whitney did perform after 2000, there was an issue with the sweating. Now look, some people just sweat, they do. But Whitney was a whole different level of sweating. The woman was drenched in sweat by the time she was finished with a single song. She had to hold a handkerchief in one hand to keep the sweat out of her eyes. Now her vocal performances are a workout. I think she was sweating from the workout that those songs require but people speculated that her perspiring so heavily had to do with drug use. Who knows? There was no question that Whitney Houston was battling addiction. She kept it very close to the vest and it wasn't discussed openly, but it was obvious. Her appearance changed. She stopped performing and then came the TV show. Who remembers being Bobby Brown, the TV show? 
I watched every episode. I was obsessed. This was still kind of in the beginning of reality TV. And this was also at a time where the internet had started up, but it wasn't like it is now. And so you didn't see our celebrities um, in such close and upfront circumstances, living in their house, talking to their spouses, talking to their kids. Being Bobby Brown was a disaster. Whitney had always been very careful about her image and really carefully curated what she let the public see. And for whatever reason, he talked her into doing this TV show and it was, it, it was a hot mess. She and Bobby would get in physical fights. Whitney Houston is from Newark, New Jersey. She's not somebody you would want to mess with. Bobby was also from a rough background and they would get into it. I remember one scene in particular, he says something to her, she's caught him with another woman or something and he says something to her and she gets right in his face and she's like, who do, who do you think you're talking to? Have you forgotten who I am? Don't think all this money and all this fame. And he walks away from her and she picks something up and throws it at him and hits him in the back of the head. I shouldn't laugh, but it was just so shocking to see this superstar acting like that. And he actually grabs her and tackles her and wrestles her to the floor and they're physically fighting. And the sad part of it is their daughter, who's maybe like a preteen or an early teenager then, is watching the whole thing, yelling at him to stop. When I say Hot Mess Express, it was like the Anna Nicole show. In some ways it was worse. On the TV show, there's talk of Whitney's affair with Tupac, which angered Bobby. And we got this very brief glimpse into the lives of the super rich and famous. But they didn't live then like they live now. People back in the early 2000s that were really famous had a chef, maybe a nanny and an assistant. These people now have teams of people. It's very different now. But yeah, I might have to go and find that TV show and watch it again. Despite all of the talent and all of the fame and all of the money the world has to offer, Whitney Houston just couldn't seem to pull herself out of the downward spiral she was in. Everyone always wanted to blame Bobby Brown, but the truth is Whitney Houston had her demons. Later in her life, she claimed she had been abused by a female cousin. She was very angry about her religious mother's affair with a church minister as well. She said her father stole money from her and her relatives gave her drugs long before Bobby Brown did. Gary, Whitney's brother, later confirmed the allegations of abuse by a female relative when they were young. Whitney also knew that she had done and said too much in front of her daughter, and she regretted that. And yes, it does appear that Whitney's struggles had a grave effect on her daughter. On February 11, 2012, Whitney Houston was staying at the Beverly Hilton Hotel in Beverly Hills. She ordered room service and ate quite a large meal consisting of a hamburger, fries, and a turkey sandwich. She ate part of that meal while in the bathtub. At some point during the bath, she lost consciousness and slipped under the water and drowned. At autopsy, it was found that she was suffering from early heart disease and that heavy cocaine use had damaged many of her internal organs. She was only 48 years old. I remember exactly where I was when I found out that Whitney Houston was dead. One of my good girlfriends called me and she said, Stacy, and I said, oh my gosh, what? You know, I knew she was gonna tell me something horrible. And she's like, Whitney Houston's dead. And we both just cried. It was sad and it was shocking because we had all kind of watched it happen. And I think that's what made it even worse. It was very obvious what she was going through. It's kind of like with Lane Staley, only we didn't feel as close to him because he pulled away, but we'd all watched her slowly die. And so when she did, it was like, wow, that really happened and nobody did anything. The news of this legend's death hit the world as hard, if not harder than the death of her peers, like Prince and Michael Jackson. It was shocking. It was unbelievable. She was so young. And on top of the shock was the fact that the Grammys took place the day after she died. I don't watch award shows, but I do remember hearing that the show that night was very different, somber, sad, and not a celebratory night. There is no doubt that we will never see another Whitney Houston. Coming from a person who has made my life and my living singing, I will tell you, she was one of a kind. People like her are born with a gift that cannot be taught and it cannot be coached. Sadly, so many gifted and talented people fall into the world of drugs and they lose it all. Stay with me because I'm going to show you one of Whitney Houston's favorite foods. I read a lot of articles. We know what her last meal was. Like I said, a hamburger, fries, and a turkey sandwich. She had quite a few favorite foods, but one really I found 
adorable. She liked fried chicken, she liked sushi, she liked tomato soup, but hang on. Whitney Houston loved Fruity Pebbles. For my foreign viewers, Fruity Pebbles is a cold cereal that kids eat for breakfast here in the States. They probably shouldn't eat this for breakfast, but they do. Fruity Pebbles is associated with the 1960s and 70s cartoon, The Flintstones. So this is Fred Flintstone and this is Barney Rubble. And they have Fruity Pebbles and then they have Cocoa Pebbles that are chocolate flavored. But Whitney loved Fruity Pebbles, so let's give it a taste. Oh, I haven't smelled that smell. Wow, that, oof, that takes me back. Oh. This is what they look like. It's like a bowl of sugar and chemicals and dye for breakfast. Just fantastic. They're very, very small. They're like little teeny tiny cornflakes but they're much sweeter. And they're very fruity smelling and tasting. Dude, I'm like zapped back to my Aunt Pat's kitchen. My mom never bought sugared cereal. We had like grape nuts. Grape nuts for little kids. And sometimes we'd have granola, but my mom never ever bought cereal like this. But her sister did, my aunt, and we would have it. So let's pour some milk on here. I always smell my milk before I use it. You never know. The date's a week away, but you never know. Kind of excited for this. Oh. It's been probably 40 years. I can see my aunt's kitchen. I can see the living room. I can see the old TV and the console. This is what I love about food. It can zap you to a place in time that you can never visit. Mm. It's obviously crunchy. It has kind of a corn flavor and then a very artificial fruit flavor. And it's sweet. It also turns your milk, this really gross kind of brownish color. I never drink the milk out of my cereal. But yeah, Fruity Pebbles. Who'd have thunk it? Thank you for joining me today on Dining with Death, Dining with the Departed. If you wanna support me, you can hit the like button, you can subscribe to my channel, and if you really wanna help out, you can join my Patreon. It helps support the channel, and in the end, the goal there is to raise money to donate to police departments that have cold case DNA in storage that cannot be tested because there's no money to test it. We wanna help with that. You can donate a dollar a month if you want. It's fine with me. I really appreciate you spending a little bit of your day with me as we remembered one of the greatest singers that has ever and will ever live. Stay safe, my friends, and be kind to each other. And I'll see you next time on Dining with Death. Bye.